This is the new iPhone 16e, Apple's cheapest new phone. And it features Apple's first ever custom design modem, the C1, which they claim is the most power efficient modem ever in an iPhone. However, they did not make any claims about the performance of this modem, so that means I gotta test it myself. So here I have the iPhone 16e using Apple's C1 modem next to Apple's best iPhone, the 16 Pro, which uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon X71M modem. And in case you didn't know, the modem is basically the component of the phone that handles all the wireless networking, so that includes cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. To start, I'm performing testing on the Verizon network right next to one of their C-band sites. Both phones are on the exact same plan, and I'm running the test separately on each phone. I'm choosing the Coverage Map app for speed testing because I like the cool features it has, so I'll be running five back-to-back -back tests with two seconds in between each one. This is pretty much the same way I'll be running tests all throughout this video. As this first round of speed test finishes up, we're getting an average download speed of 872 megabits per second for the iPhone 16 Pro and an average upload of 62.8 megabits per second. On the iPhone 16e, we're getting an average of 883 down and 56.1 up. The ping on the 16 Pro is 31 milliseconds, while the ping on the 16e is 35, so basically on the Verizon network, performance is practically identical between these two phones. But now let's run nperf speed test on both phones. nperf is a much more comprehensive network testing app that combines a basic speed test with website performance and video streaming performance. The iPhone 16 Pro finished with an overall result of 101,807 endpoints, which is a score that's averaged out from all these different tests. After running the same test, the 16e got around 90,000 endpoints, which was mostly due to the slightly lower download and upload speeds, but everything else was in line with the 16 Pro. Now that you get the idea of the testing process, let's move on to the AT&T network next to an AT&T site. To make sure that both phones are connected to the same bands, I'm briefly turning airplane mode on and off on both, so when it's turned back on, both phones should connect to the same cell tower they're nearest to. The iPhone 16 Pro finished the speed test with an average download speed of 700 megabits per second and an average upload speed of 96.8 megabits per second. The Apple C1 modem did perform noticeably behind the Qualcomm modem in the 16 Pro, with an average download of 579 megabits per second and an average upload of 89.6. This means that for our first test on the AT&T network, the iPhone 16e overall got a 17% lower download speed and an overall 7% lower upload speed. Now I tried running mperf on both phones here, but for some reason on the AT&T network specifically, it just keeps failing. It's really weird and it doesn't seem to do that on any other network, but alas, the test must go on. So let's try T-Mobile now, and again, both phones have the exact same plan and are running the exact same tests. Now for the results, this is where we see some real gaps. The iPhone 16 Pro finished with an average download of 857 megabits per second, an average upload of 105 megabits per second, and a ping, or latency, of 32 milliseconds. The Apple C1 modem finished with an average download of 599 megabits per second, which is over 30% slower than what we got on the Qualcomm modem from the iPhone 16 Pro. The average upload of 112 megabits per second, however, is a teensy bit faster than the 16 Pro, but not really enough to make a difference. The ping on the iPhone 16e is over double the 16 Pros at 65 milliseconds, and for ping, lower is better. Finally, for the comprehensive testing in nperf, we can see that the Apple C1 modem in the iPhone 16e scored around 8.8% lower than the Qualcomm modem in the 16 Pro overall. But again, we can see that download speed on the T-Mobile network seems to struggle compared to the 16 Pro. Upload speed and everything else seems to be fine, but something's up with that download speed. But those were basically Basically just tests that were right next to the cell towers. What about testing in the real world? To find out, I unleashed my inner Costco guy and went to Costco. This was on a Tuesday afternoon and it was pretty crowded, so it seemed like the perfect spot to test this. Plus, it's in an area with a lot of other stuff around it, including a mall, a Walmart, and several large hotels. This is where we can really put the modems of these two phones to the test. I'll breeze through this part so you're not completely bored. On the Verizon network, both phones performed practically the same, with the 16e even getting a slightly better download and upload speed. Even on nperf, the numbers were all incredibly close. AT&T on the iPhone 16 Pro got an average download of 241 megabits per second and an average upload of 13 megabits per second. The iPhone 16e ended up with an average download speed of 112 megabits per second, which is 53% lower than what the iPhone 16 Pro got. Somehow though, it managed to crush the 16 Pro on upload speed with an over 47% faster result of 24.6 megabits per second. Ping was also less than half on the iPhone 16e, which 
which is a good thing. Again, nperf just would not run on the AT&T network, so let's skip to our T-Mobile results. The iPhone 16 Pro finished with an average of 390 megabits per second down and 26.1 up, but the 16e got an average of 233 down and 22.2 up, again continuing the trend of consistently lower download speeds. On nperf, both phones scored nearly the same, except again, the iPhone 16e's download speed is low. So what have we gathered so far? On the Verizon network, Apple's new C1 modem consistently holds its own to the Qualcomm X71M modem found in the regular iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro. However, if you use the AT&T or T-Mobile networks, you can expect a considerably lower download speed and overall less reliability. But that's not the end of the world, and if you care more about having exceptional battery life, you might actually prefer having slightly slower cellular performance if it means your phone can last longer throughout your day. I'm hopeful that one day Apple can improve their modem design in the future to perform just as good as the competition from Qualcomm. Their first stab at it in the iPhone 16e falls just a little bit behind. One final note on Apple C1 modem is that it does not support millimeter wave, meaning you can't get ludicrous fast speeds like these, and if you find yourself in a huge crowded area like Fiserv Forum where the Milwaukee Bucks play, you can pretty much expect your phone to be unusably slow during a game. There's a reason they have millimeter wave there, to handle network traffic from hundreds or even thousands of people at once. But let's call a spade a spade, this is probably a case of Apple just wanting to save a few bucks to produce this phone, since adding all the proper millimeter wave equipment can cost like 40 to 50 bucks extra. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to drop a like and share this with someone who might be interested in the performance of Apple's new modem. Thanks a ton for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.